What do you think are the most common mistakes people make when they're trying to um, uh, enter nutritional ketosis? What, what would be the top three or four mistakes that people are making? Yeah, not tracking. I mean, people do it. They're just like, oh, I'm just going to eat, you know, this or that and not. Try. It's like, uh, no, you need to like just write it. You don't have to do it every day, day in and day out. But, you know, use a good tracking metric. Uh, Carbon app is great. I know you've had lean on. I've yep. used that. And there's other apps out there, the keto and calculator. So, so tracking because you want people to be able to correlate the blood levels they're seeing with what they're eating? Yeah. So the macronutrient uh, ratios and the composition, but also the total amount of calories, which at the time when I get into this, no, everybody was said, you know, if you do a ketogenic diet, you don't have to track calories. Calories don't matter. But we know that's like, I just knew that was... BS to begin with, because there are some people who can easily overeat on a ketogenic diet. You know, I could sit down with a bag of, of macadamia nuts and polish the bag off or sour cream or heavy cream or whatever. So it's easy to do. So yeah, uh, track total calories, macronutrients, track your blood ketone levels. Uh, you could do urine or breath too. So if mistake number one is you're not measuring your actual ketone levels and you're not tracking what you're eating so you can see the association of, hey, when I ate this, it went down. When I ate this, it went up. Um, what are some other mistakes people make with their diet formulation? Is it too, is, is, is that they typically erring on the side of too much protein, not enough protein? Are they not realizing where carbs are sneaking into their diet? And, and yeah. what kind of guidance do you give people? How many grams of carbs a day do you tell somebody or do you vary that based on their activity level? Yeah, taking a step back. So I view, unlike many people out there, I view a ketogenic diet as a prescription metabolic therapy. <laughs> so that's the world that I come from, yep. you know, and then there's like, you know, there's clinical keto and then there's like internet keto. And if you're doing it to manage a clinical condition, you should be working with a registered dietitian. That's savvy. But if someone just says, yeah. look, I just want to do this on my own, just like any other yeah. diet I might follow, what would be sort of the guidance you'd give them? Yeah, it depends, you know, why they want to use it. Uh, many well, most I think people the most common lose weight. Reason <laughs> be weight loss. Yeah, right? weight loss. Uh, so I would say calories are super important. So just uh, gravitate towards a high protein ketogenic diet. And if it's just purely weight loss, I would say high protein, moderate fat, and then high fiber. So the carbohydrates that you're getting uh, should be just fibrous carbohydrates. So you can get 50 to even 100 grams of carbs per day if one third of those carbohydrates are fiber. So that excludes all ultra processed food, even processed food, like broccoli is about one third fiber. So if you go down the list, there's about, I think I have a list of about 30 or 40 forms of carbohydrates that are about like one third, uh, a quarter to one third fiber. So if you're pulling from that list, uh, you're so going to have you've got you've got yeah. all your leafy vegetables. Yeah. you mentioned broccoli. Would carrots be in there? No, no broccoli, cauliflower, uh, carrots. No, especially if they're cooked, they're high. They can be highly glycemic. Mm -hmm. uh, but avocado, bell peppers. Yeah, bell peppers are a little bit too high in sugar. They're at the cutoff point. Maybe like a green pepper or something like that. But generally, things that you'd find in like you cucumber. know cucumber. Cucumber, yes. Uh, you know, uh, asparagus tomato. is tomato. No, tomato is like a fruit, pretty high in sugar. So these are things that you need to be kind of vigilant. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, you know, go to guides. And that's why I think it's important to use like a tracking app. One thing I noticed, especially using the Carbon app or other apps, is that I was like, eh, I'm getting about three, 3,200 grams of, of or 3,200 calories per day. But when I put it into these tracking apps, it's more like 4,000 calories per day. I, you know, Meaning always you think you're at underestimate it. Yep. Yeah, I always, always underestimate it. Uh, probably because just fat is so calorically dense, right? So the amount of egg yolks and a lot of fatty fish. This morning I had like three cans of sardines. Each can is 20 grams of fat and 15 grams of protein. And that's so 20, that's 60 grams of fat just from sardines and extra virgin olive oil, <laughs> you know, and that's, uh, it adds up. It just seems like, oh, this is like nothing. This is like, you know, it's less than I would have if I'm eating at home, but uh, it adds up. And I think that people that are not losing weight or managing whatever they're trying to manage with the ketogenic diet, they need to track calories. And simple cal caloric restriction or creating even like a 10 or 20% energy deficit will be the big lever that's going to cure 90% of what most people are seeking the ketogenic diet for. And you and could do that. So with what's the efficacy diet. then? So what, why do you think a ketogenic diet works? Uh, do you think it works because under conditions of caloric restriction, it's more satiating than 
diets that are high in carbohydrates.